All right, today's Friday, and also um, this semester has been about about a month. Yeah, so we're heading toward the uh, midterm, the uh, mid mid of the uh, semester. Um, now so we're about to select our uh, let's say leaders, and uh, also we trying to uh, support and then have a cooperation to make the uh, great contribution. You know, build up the school and uh, also you know culture and a good you know uh, the atmosphere of the school. So today I'd like to talk about it is called leadership. Um, when I was about age about uh, 30, um, I had a choice to select my major. Uh, after I finished my theology major, I was uh, thinking and even the, uh, looking at the world, especially church organizations. It's a nonprofit organization, which means, uh, nonprofit means not focus on making money. It's a more spirit and it's a uh, contribution and the social uh, contribution that the part, part we just focus on. Um, then I realized, I think the one of the most key factors, success, positive factors for growth, which is the uh, organization growth, church growth, that is, answer is leadership. So I select the leadership as my major and then study. I still remember one of the definition or, uh, or say maybe like theory uh, from the research. What the theory, the one of the theories I was really quite impressed is this one. According to Sanders, leadership is influence, the ability of one, of a, uh, one person to influence others to follow his or her lead. One more time, let me read for you. Leadership is influence, the ability of one person to influence others to follow his or her lead. The key word of this definition is this one, influence. Can we look at each other? Look at each other. Can you say, you look beautiful? All right. Can we say it one more time? You're amazing. And last one. Thank you so much for your influence. Question. Then, what kind of influence you've been sharing, you've been giving to your people? When you speak, when you talk, when you act, when you think, is a positive influence or negative influence you're giving to another? Why? Because everyone it is called being contagious, which means uh, being influenced by someone. Your parents, your teachers, your mentors, even Jesus, he influenced everyone. So we got to be careful, seriously, when you talk, when we talk and when we act, when we think, the people, they will be influenced by you and I. That's why literally it is called influence. This diagram, it is also, it's a really famous diagram about organization. There are a lot of tiers, about one, two, three, four. Four tiers and different colors. Yellow part, it is called active regular Christians. Our schools, it's not big population, but small population we have. But like among our inter-school populations, including staff members, how many, what percentage of it is called, being called as active regular Christians or active regular leaders, maybe students or teachers. It is called active means what? Is what? More being active, which is a proactive and willing to help someone, willing to ask someone, do you need some help? May I help? May I help? Do you need some help? May I help you? Something you want to know, find out what they need. Then how are you going to make the contribution? Now another theory is this is called passive regular Christians, which means you just been waiting. What? Until your friends, your teachers approach you and ask, do you need some help? Then you may say, yes. You want to join this one? 
Uh, yes. You want to join marathon? Uh, yeah. It's something. Pass. Another thing is this one. Occasional Christians, which means seasonal. Like, let's say, this coming, let's say, like, you know, fall. Um, we were actually in the fall. Uh, Thanksgiving season. You know, I'm happy. Maybe go to church or, you know, go to, like, maybe our school. Have some turkey or chicken and some stuff. Why? Festival, which was a like celebration, special event, Christmas season, Easter season, my birthday party, or sports activities. Something special, occasion time, you want to go, you want to participate. It is called occasional Christians. Same thing. A lot of parents are looking for school, something special resort, college resort, SAT resort, or academic resort, achievement. Then, they look for, only focus on that part, and then select the school. Let's go out. Occasional, special event, or special theme. Last one is this one. Nominal Christians, which means what? I want to be called as a Christian, but no church activity. No go to, no, I don't go to church, even no time to read the Bible, which means what? I want to call myself as a Christian, but no action, no faith. I just call me as a Christian. No meaning. It is called just name, name me. It is a being called as a Christian. My question is this one, guys. One, two, three, four. Four tiers. Which tier do you belong? Leaders, question this one. Some people said leaders are born or made. There's a lot of, you know, dealing. Contribute uh, with, uh, you know, maybe like, you know, just like debating about this one, but this is a definition. Right. Self confident, which means uh, born leadership, a lot of people, they uh, literally talk about you guys need a self confident. Today, a lot of people, candidates, they want to come up here and then speak with confidence or lack of confidence. You can feel that. Some people probably trying to practice to speak, you know, better clear message to you guys or some people naturally you know brave heart to speak address what they want but spiritual leaders with this one confident in God and another leadership knows man which means knowing people but spiritual leadership it is called knowing God first and leadership secular leadership is a makes own decision I'm thinking researching let me make the decision by myself, but God's leadership, seek God's will. Wisdom, ambition, this is my goal. Let's do this one, achieve this goal. But spiritual leaders, be humble in God. And second leaders, create method, which means import, invite, or more, create methodologies to make some profits, outcomes, but spiritual leadership, follows God's example. Enjoys command, which means the second leadership, enjoy commanding, control people, I'm happy. But Christian leadership, it is called delight in obedience to God. Happy with others. Serving others. Second leadership, seeks personal reward. This is mine, what I achieve. But on the other hand, Spiritual leadership loves God and others. Last one. Second leadership, what, what, the, what people say, what the, what the leadership is, what this one. I'm trying to be independent, but Christian leadership, it depends on God. I want to encourage you guys, those who are going to run, even the, trying to become leaders, our school and any communities, even in the future college, I'm not saying criticizing secular literacy is bad. No, it's not. We need that. But you need to gain, you need to acknowledge what spiritual leadership is. What kind of, let's say, attributes or characteristics of spiritual leadership being required. That's really important. Why? We need spiritual perspective. And leaders, when you become leaders after election, I want to encourage you guys this one. 
you must know the following things. First one, people's need is different. From class 1 to 10, age 8 to, let's say, senior to high school, everyone needs different. In terms of their circumstance, their perspectives, knowledge, background, everyone is different. Second thing is this one. Once again, people's perspective is different, which means what they have to do or what they have not to do. That kind of wisdom leaders must be knowing and even aware. This actually the uh, one is uh, quite related with the Bible as well. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18 to 20, what Bible, Jesus, even Paul mentioned, everyone is different. Look at your body, finger, head, eyes, nose, mouth. Each feature is what different function has. But each feature is what? One body. One body. Everyone is different, comes from different backgrounds, but we become one body in the name of Christ for what? Glory of God. Glory of God. Those, once again, the, all the candidates, when you become leaders, keep in mind this one. When you become leaders, work for each person, but glorify our Jesus Christ, our God. That is one body spirit leadership. Billy Graham, this is the person I really respect still. What he said still, I sometimes really listen to his sermon, the archive sermon. What he said, when the real leader speaks, people do listen. One more time. When the real leader speaks, leader means could be you, could be your parents, could be your teachers, could be your neighbors. When you respect, which means uh, respect them, then you start to listen. Your leaders become leaders, being respected by your others, your followers, they will start to listen to your voices. Last one, this one. Leaders must know, must have this one. They're, they need to go through about five processing, five experiences. Number one is this one, difficult experiences. Being a leader, it's not easy. I'm one of the leaders here. I'm trying to face a lot of, handle a lot of difficulties, challenges. Why? Because one of the leaders. So it's not all the time easy, must be handling, facing, in confidence what? With difficult experience. Working with others, other, all the members in ca cabinet is not easy. Different opinions, there's sometimes arguments. This is democracy, not dictatorship. Jesus, he demonstrates how to serve, how to work together, enter his life. It is called difficult experience. Second experience, leaders, 20% of the core leaders, which means the top leaders, they must have spiritual experience. When you face challenge, encourage your followers, let's pray together. Let's try to listen to God's voice. Third one is what? Learning experience. All the challenge, after challenge, ask yourself, what kind of lesson do we learn for our growth, our team? Last, the fourth, fun experience. Enjoy your leadership, enjoy your teamwork, and they have a good experience together. Last one, victorious experience, short-term, long-term goal. Try to achieve your goal together, enjoy, and then encourage each other. Last one, glorify our Jesus Christ. It is called victorious experience. So within one year, you could plan about one month goal, semester goal, one year goal. It is called short-term, long-term goal. You could create and achieve the goal, it is called victorious experience moment, you're gonna have and encourage it together. Today we're gonna to listen to once again all the candidates, their voices, and then their statements, their plans, their suggestions. But we teachers, all leaders, we've been praying that all students here, even though you may not be selected, elected, don't be regretful or feel sad, no. Try to, you could be supportive, for your leaders, your cabinet leaders, as what? 
followers, even one of our advisors, a lot of different roles, but here, being active, regular Christians or leaders. We're trying to raise these people from our school, from this community. That's one of the purpose we exist in, Juniper Christian School in the name of Christ. I hope that you're going to have wisdom to listen and select your best leaders. Let's pray our hats.